Hello, everyone. I'm Jana Hill, Adult Services Manager for the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome to today's program, the fifth and final in our week-long business equity series. Thanks for joining us this week to learn more about support and resources available for local women and minority-owned businesses. All five of this week's programs have been recorded and will be available soon on the library's YouTube channel. Everyone who registered will also receive an email with important links, program recaps, and a survey to help us develop more programs to support, support community vitality through entrepreneurship and small business. So today I'm happy to introduce Tracy Irby and Donna Lee Sustinger from the Texas Women's University Center for Women Entrepreneurs. Welcome back, ladies. Thank you so much. It's been a great week here. It has been. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about funding your business, and this is so important. Uh, women especially have um, less, don't have as much access to capital, and so we're going to talk about how you can go about this and other ways you can find funding, et cetera, for your business. So let's get started. Okay, so for those of you that are new and haven't seen us yet this week, the Center for Women Entrepreneurs was funded by the state legislature in 2015 just to help support women entrepreneurs anywhere in the state of Texas. And we do that through funding, advisement, training, networking, and mentoring. And we also serve the community students in research. So there's going to be a lot of words on here, but there's a lot of great information. So what is it you need to know before you have a funding request? If you're going to be asking for money, you need to be able to tell whoever you're talking to uh, about what you're going to need for that funding. So you want to make yourself an outline of your funding requirements. Your goal is to clearly explain how much funding you'll need over the next few years and what you're going to use it for. Is it going to be for inventory? Is it going to be for um, rent? Is it going to be for payroll? Uh, sometimes people aren't sure how much money to ask for. Um, this is where business plan is very important. So you can go in and look at your financials. Uh, at what, what, what is your break even point? Um, things like that are all helpful to know when you're going to be asking for funding. Specify whether you want debt or equity, the terms that you would like applied, and the length of time your request is going to cover. And again, give a detailed description of how you're going to use the funds. And then specify if you need them for equipment, material, salaries, any of those things and always include a description of your future strategic financial plans, like paying off debt or selling your business. So many people start with funding themselves when they're doing a startup. Could be through your savings. Uh, some have used their 401ks. There's a way you can self-direct that and use that money. But we really hate sometimes hate to see people putting their retirement into a business, but it is an option. Uh, many turn to family. They're often willing to give you give you money. Um, some will give it without any restrictions, some want it written up as a loan, um, some ask friends, some have done it on a credit card, but we're gonna look at some of the different ways that we can fund your business. So one of the ways is funding your own growth. Many people, when they're gonna start a business, look at the largest picture or the largest way they could start their business. So instead of that, maybe you don't need the building to start off, that you could rent something instead of buying a building. Maybe you can scale your business so it's not quite so large. I had somebody talking about a trucking business, uh, new business to them, and they wanted to buy four vehicle, four 18 wheelers to start with. Maybe you don't need that to start your business. Instead of employees, you might be able to use contractors. And then think, do I need a brick and mortar 
or can I do this business just as well online? And another thing people don't always like to hear, but keep your day job. This is a reason many people don't get SBA loans is that they don't have the income to sustain them while they're starting and growing their business. So if you can start your business uh, and keep your day job or and just do your business at night or on the side, that is a way to get it started, generating income, and then you can fund your own growth without having to go outside. So if we're gonna be looking outside, your credit is really important. So credit really is the ability to borrow money based on a promise you're gonna pay it back. We've seen this with car loans, credit cards, et cetera. Some people ask, why would they look at my personal credit? This is for a business. And this is gonna tell more about you that bills are paid on time or your history because if you don't pay them on time, personally, they don't think you will for your business. So just know that is a part of it. So when you do this, when you request a loan, the first thing a lender is gonna look at is your personal, and if you have had a business before, your business credit history as well. So before you even start the process, you wanna make sure you have good credit. Make sure you know before you go in and apply for a loan. A better credit report will raise your credit score. The higher the score, the lower the interest. And then know which reports are really free if you wanna order yours. Annualcreditreport.com is the one that gives you three free credit reports a year. Sometimes credit cards have free FICO scores on those as well. So you can check there to get that information. There are other sites like Credit Karma, uh, Mint, I'm trying to think of some of the others that have credit scores on there as well. And even the uh, credit bureaus have some free information where you can look. Uh, they don't always give your credit score, but they can notify you if somebody has checked your credit. Uh, I recently, well, last year bought a house, but as I did that, I knew immediately when somebody um, checked my credit. So it's good to use some of those just so you get an idea. So why are the credit reporting agents agencies important to my business? Well, again, anyone is going to review your personal credit history and may review. And if there's business history, look at that. And to, they just want to make sure that you can manage debts and obligations to financial institutions. Uh, it can also benefit your business operations by helping you assess and reduce risk. So we also, and our small business advisor can help with this as well. If you want help going through your credit report or anything like that, if you know you're getting ready for something, it's a great idea to check this out before you get started. So personal credit versus business credit history. So your personal credit is a record of your use of credit reported to consumer credit reporting agencies and your business credit history, which is totally different, your business's record of handling debts and financial obligations reported to business credit reporting agencies. So what to know when you're getting ready to borrow? You wanna know the different types of financing that you have the ability to repay, credit history, equity investment, do you have any collateral in here? Uh, do you own a building and maybe you're using that or something else? Do you have business property already? Are there things? Um, management experience. Have you ever been in this industry before? And then think about questions your lender may, may ask you. So again, this is why you want to prepare before you go. So make sure again, you have a business plan, you know your business, what you need the money for, how much money you need, how and how you're gonna pay it back. 
debt financing. I think we're all pretty much familiar with this one. Debt financing can either be short term with full repayment due in less than one year or long term with repayment due over a period greater than one year. Lender does not gain an ownership interest in the business and debt obligations are usually limited to repaying the loan with interest. The loans are often secured by some or all of the assets of the company. In addition, lenders commonly require the borrower's personal guarantee in case of default. This ensures the borrower has a sufficient personal interest at stake in the business. Again, they want you to have a stake in your business because if you don't, why should anyone else loan you money? But debt financing is what uh, many commonly use to finance a business. Ability to repay. The ability or capacity to repay the funds must be justified in your loan package. So just make sure uh, you include cash flow from the business and then as well as a secondary source such as collateral. Again, there are a lot of different things that you can use as collateral and depending what type of lender you go, some are even more generous than others than others. Some have used vehicles, some have used, um, again, if you have property, uh, other personal things as well that they've used as a secondary source. Um, banks are more comfortable offering assistance to businesses that have been in existence for a number of years and have a proven track record. This is kind of that catch-22 when you're starting a business. You need money, but you don't have a business history yet. So again, I'm gonna refer you back to your business plan here. Make sure everything in there is strong as it can be when you're going to get a loan. Uh, if however, the business is a startup, it's necessary to prepare a thorough loan package with a detailed explanation how the business will be able to repay the loan. types of debt financing. So if your family and friends give you a loan, that is considered debt financing because you need to pay them back. Bank loans, personal loans, government back loans such as SBA loans. SBA loans do not actually come from the SBA, they come from your own lender but the, govern, the government guarantees a portion of those loans. So many banks like those because they're not on the hook for the whole loan. Uh, there's lines of credit that you can use. These are especially great if you have a cyclical business or maybe you have a lot of expense at first when you're getting inventory, you pay that down, you can use the same line of credit many times over and over and over again. Um, their equipment loans, real estate loans, these are the type of debt most of us are familiar with or have some type of uh, debt financing already. Personal cash injection. Owners must put some of their own money into the business. Um, depending on where you go, it could be 20 to 40% that they're looking for. You must have skin in the game. Many times we see people coming in and they're hoping that someone else will finance 100% of their business. And this is really difficult to find anything like this. Again, if you don't believe in the business or don't have anything invested in it, others don't really feel comfortable with it. So your investment, again, does not always have to be cash. You could be putting uh, something in as collateral and that works many times when you're getting loans. And it could be equipment, it could be property, uh, it could be a vehicle. There are many different ways you can put your own equity into your business. Commercial loans are probably really one of the most common ways people get loans when they're doing a startup. Uh, you get banks, saving loan, savings and loans, credit unions, commercial finance companies, and again, the SBA guaranteed loans. Um, family and friends, a lot of times though, uh, be really careful with this because this can also ruin a lot of good 
uh, relationships. And if you are taking a loan from family or friends, it's still best to get it written up, give them terms uh, that everybody is comfortable with and go from there. Uh, banks can do short-term loans, seasonal lines of credit, single purpose loans. Uh, if there was just, if you were getting property or equipment, they don't really like to offer long-term loans to small firms because many times, many, unfortunately, new businesses fail within the first couple of years. Uh, important thing before you even do this is if you have a bank, make sure you go in and meet the banker. There is so much more you can get if you have a relationship with a banker. Um, many had problems during COVID uh, getting the PPP and some of the other loans because they had no relationship with a banker. So if you know you're going to be wanting to get a business loan and you already have a personal uh, checking account, start going in, start meeting the people at the bank, set up an appointment to meet with a banker. I have had, and I don't even live there anymore, in the same bank for about 25, 30 years. And because I have a proven history with them, I could call them now if I wanted to buy a vehicle or wanted to buy something for a business, I can do it over the phone because they know me, they know my history. So you wanna make sure at some point, especially before you go in for a loan, that you have some kind of relationship with the bank. There are other types of financing that are considered non-lender financing. It's not the typical way you go and get money for your business. Here they want you to have a great credit history, no blemishes. They're usually looking 695, 700 and above. Um, some people, again, have used their credit cards to finance things. And maybe the interest is high, but if that's the only way you can start your business or if you have a lot of orders and you know you're gonna get a lot of money in, I mean, it can be worth your while to do that if there are no other sources where you can get money, capital funding for your business. Some, there's something called factoring, which is called invoice financing. And they take a, they pay you up front, but they take a percentage of it. And this has been really helpful to people that do government contracting, work with schools, work with other places that may take 30, 60, 90 days to pay. pay. So you can turn in your in, invoices and they will pay you for those. So that's another option. There are also collateral-based loan or cash injection. Again, collateral, maybe you have something that's not even related to the business that you can put up for collateral. Again, uh, we don't like people to use homes for things, but some have done like a cash out refi. Uh, but again, that's not one of the preferred ways to do it, but maybe you have something else, maybe a car, maybe another car, something you could use that way to get a loan. Uh, commercial or residential real estate. I mean, again, cars, equipment. If you have some equipment that's already paid for that you're using in your business, that's a way to get money as well. Equity financing or equity capital is money raised by a company in exchange for a share of ownership in the business. So for anybody here that watches Shark Tank, uh, they take a percentage of the business. Uh, most smaller growth stage businesses use limited equity financing and equity often comes from investors. Again, it could be friends, relatives, employees, customers, or colleagues. Just know when something like this is happening as well, make sure you get some everything in writing and a good partnership agreement or something that spells out their percentage and how they're going to be paid paid back or when they're going to get their equity? Are they getting things out before you get anything out of the business? So just make sure you're aware of what you're getting into when you do this kind of financing. The most common source of equity funding comes from venture capitalists. 
they're institutional risk takers and maybe groups of wealthy individuals, government assisted sources or major financial institution. Most specialize in one or two closely related industries. And I've heard this statistic before that venture capitalists know that not all businesses are going to be a success. And if they think one out of the four they invest in makes it, then it's okay. So equity financing, again, you're selling a portion of your company. So a lot of people are not very comfortable with that. Uh, but there are some pros to it. There's no additional capital needed from you. So this way, if you didn't have the money maybe to grow your business or go to the next level and you can't get any more money, um, this is a great way to get a cash infusion. You don't have to repay it. Uh, the cons are, though, there are additional owners and you give up control. So uh, and we again, for those that watch Shark Tank, sometimes we've seen them want is the controlling interest in your business. So that is something to think about if you're looking for this type of financing. You can find these from many different places. They're angel investors. Uh, there's a whole directory of angel investors uh, groups for the state of Texas. You can do that through venture capital, as we just talked about. Royalty financing. Maybe you have some kind of business that, that gets royalties. Uh, crowdfunding, mezzanine financing small business investment companies. So there are different types of equity financing that you can get for your business. Crowdfunding is something a lot of people are familiar with. There are ways, we've seen it for, for people that we know, maybe if they've had a medical issue or something like that, they've used crowdfunding for that, but there's a way to do it for your business as well. And it's the use of small amounts of capital from a large number of people to finance your business ventures. Uh, it may be used for loans, donations, usually with rewards, sales or equity. Um, I've seen some where you get a t-shirt or some before the company has started up, you'll get the product once it's developed or comes to market. Um, there was one I invested in, it was a, a group of women entrepreneurs and I was really trying to support them. So early on I helped and I was supposed to get one of the first products and unfortunately they weren't able to bring it to market. So then they re refunded that amount to us. Um, but crowdfunding has the potential to increase entrepreneurship by expanding your pool of investors from who funds can be raised beyond the traditional sources of funding. So you have a lot of people and some may not even be that large of amount, but the more people you get, the more money you're getting from crowdfunding. And these are some of the top crowd crowdfunding sites, uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, it's a, just some of the different ones here. GoFundMe, um, many times that's for donations. Uh, there's some that are related to specific industries. So if you are in the music, um, some of those sites might be more appropriate to get funds for your business. Grant funding. So a grant is money that you don't have to pay back. Uh, whereas a lender wants you to repay the loan. Businesses can qualify for grants for many reasons, whether it's because it supports a certain initiative or ownership meets certain qualification. Uh, women and minorities are an example of that. There are a variety of government, nonprofit, and private entities. Uh, the federal government does not typically award grants to start or expand a small business. Its grant programs are usually aimed at nonprofits or other government agencies that otherwise struggle to generate funding. So I came from the Small Business um, Development Center as part of the SBA. And many times people think that they can get a lot of grants for their business. Um, there used to be someone in, talking about all these different grants you could get but there really aren't as many for for-profit businesses. So just know that going in. 
but there are some that are available. So at the Center for Women Entrepreneurs, we do have some grant programs. Uh, we did the Assist Her Emergency Relief Grant Program where we gave a million dollars to 100 women-owned businesses that were affected by COVID. Uh, we knew at that point many women were the sole providers at home, and if they didn't couldn't run their business, it would really affect their life. We also have the Start Her Grant Program. Uh, we've awarded 50,000 grants to 10 women-owned businesses each year. That will open in September. And we just recently did the Veteran Women Entrepreneur Grant, where we awarded 250,000 to 27 women-owned businesses in Texas. So there are grant programs out there. But there are some things I wanted to cover, especially related to grants. Many people aren't comfortable with this or they aren't familiar with it. And we've seen many times that people just submit an app application without totally reading everything that is needed for the grant. There's no reason to waste your time if you aren't going to read through everything uh, on here but it's best if you do it yourself, but check out the eligibility requirements. Do you um, match what they are looking for? Uh, look at the application. What are the requirements on there? So important is build a budget. Anybody who's gonna give you money is gonna want at some point to know what you're using that money for. Write the grant proposal. Proofread and read the grant application submit the application. But if you have any questions, ask them before you submit the application. We've had people submit an application and then ask a question. We don't really want to disqualify anyone, but if there is an issue, make sure you do it. And again, feel comfortable with this. Uh, we've had people that want have wanted to get a grant writer, and we don't need that. We just need to hear from you. And this is true with so many of the grants that are out there for small businesses. So just make sure you know ahead of time how the program works. Read everything there. Uh, once you've read it, go through everything, again, review, and then if there are any questions, ask, and then submit your application. These are some places where you can find grants. Uh, there are some government grants, but again, most of those are directed to nonprofit businesses, but there are some that you will find on there for um, small businesses. And in fact, grants.gov, they had found they have found some of our grants before and, and put them on their website. So know that you can find some for for-profit businesses there. I fund women. Uh, they have a lot of grants, uh, many different ones. So you may want to go in and look at their site and see if there are any that you would be eligible for. SBA has some programs, so there's a link there where you can go and find out information from them. Idea Cafe has $1,000 grants, so you can check with them as well. FedEx has a small business grant. This is a year, yearly contest that they do. There are Amber grants for women. Uh, NACE, they have some as well. The Girl Boss Foundation has some. So know that they are out there, but make sure you know, again, know your business, what you're gonna need the funding for and follow all the directions on the grants. Here are a few more of them. Eileen Fisher, Woman-Owned Business Grant, AAUW, Community Action Grants, NAB, Small Business Grant, Open Meadows, Halstead, grantsforwomen.org, and again, grants.gov is always a good one to look at as well. So I know that was a lot of information, and I probably went through that pretty quick, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Right. I always have questions, so <laughs> That's great. I can get us started. So um, 
A question I, I was thinking um, is um, if you're looking, if you're interested in seeking out grant funding, do you recommend starting with government grants, uh, federal grants, or or starting with uh, privately funded ones through foundations and things like that? I would, for a for-profit business, I would probably start somewhere else because like ours or some of those that I, I fund women and some of the other aren't near as complicated as a government grant. Government grants sometimes are very wordy. They want a ton of information. It's hard to understand what they're asking for. And if you've never filled out a grant, that's probably not the place that you want to start. Um, I had another one written down. Um, so I was, as a government employee who, uh, mm -hmm. who um, often starts contracts with uh, with businesses for, you know, for services and things for the library. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know more about the invoice financing um, that you mentioned for, for folks working with um, um, government contracts and things like that. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it is a great way to do that. And again, we, we see so much where people are doing these contracts. And I mean, you can't wait 90 days to get paid. Um, there were some things where they said, we're trying to get these where you're paid in 30 days, but sometimes things happen. And so there are companies out there that are specifically for the in invoice financing. And so if you're looking, you can Google like factoring or invoice, but it, mm -hmm. it can really save a business because I mm -hmm. mean, if you're new, and you just do something at once. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. and you can't fulfill a contract or anything else that it's worth it to uh, have, have that ability to get the money when you need it. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard. People don't realize for a small business, you can't wait 120 days or something mm -hmm. before you get paid. I mean, you have enough <laughs> problems if you get paid immediately when you're starting out because so much of the money is going right back into the business. So this helps mm -hmm. with that spread that you have there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's really good to know. Um, so we have a couple of questions in the chat now. Um, let's see. Why wouldn't, oh, oh, let's see. There's another one. Um, okay. Is it okay to apply for and accept more than one grant at a time? Yes, um, there were, and some people, I think there was a little confusion with this. Um, our grants are given by TWU. We are not affiliated with anybody else. I don't care where else you get financing, <laughs> you know, if it's going to help your business. Uh, when there was the PPP, there were some things you couldn't have something else, but we aren't affiliated with many of the others. So if you want to, grants usually are a lot more flexible and they, they are not tied to these other companies or industries. So you can um, usually apply for as many, as mm -hmm. many as you want. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, you know, some of them just offer one. So know if there's only one grant being given that you have less of a chance that you're gonna win that. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, I will stress again, do not count on grants to fully fund your business. I think that's some really good advice. It's, it's uh, always interesting to see how grants shake out. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. So why wouldn't you try to apply for all the grants? Why would it matter where you start when you're applying for free money? Well, uh, again, you can, but this is where you wanna make sure you don't wanna waste your time if you don't know how to fill out a grant application or if it's the first time you ever do it um, because that process in itself can be very stressful. Um, mm -hmm. But if there are some and you feel comfortable doing it, but um, there are times where people are too busy doing other things that they don't get their business started. You know, that there are ways you can do it and you may not need all of this, but go ahead and apply. But make sure, again, that you qualify, that you meet all of the el eligibility requirements. Make sure you read the frequently asked questions. Uh, 
fill out a complete application, read it, reread it. <laughs> um, Someone else read it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because, you know, we know our business better than anybody else out there. And so we may use jargon or terms, and I've seen that in these as well, or acronyms, and you're reading it, and it's like, I have no idea what this is. So make sure mm -hmm. when you're doing these applications as well, you put it where anybody reading it will understand your business, because if they don't know what you're doing, they're not gonna wanna give you the funding. Mm -hmm. All right, um, moving on. Is it a poor business model to consider factoring as, as your norm? For example, this is how I'm going to fund the next contract, et cetera. Well, I mean, eventually you would like to be able to do this without having to pay any percentage to anybody else. But sometimes there are situations, I would not set it up as my original business model. And that's how I'm gonna sustain myself as the business grows. But I think really to keep you in business and to help grow it, if this is what you need, then take it. You know the money is coming in, um, that you'll have it. But it's just, again, it's really difficult sometimes that balance. And if you can keep some money aside now, take it now rather than later, and it helps sustain you, then I say go for it. You got muted somehow. <laughs> yeah. AC was making an interesting sound. So I muted myself for a minute, um, but I'm back. Um, do you have any good resources for help grant writing? <laughs> I just put the uh, YouTube link for uh, our Write a Winning Grant, Women Rise in the chat as a resource. And you can look online, but just be careful. Again, there are some classes and other things that you can take. Other, other companies offer those and business support organizations often have something on grant writing. And I would bet there's probably even some books in the library about it. <laughs> so there's a couple, <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> so... And it, and if you were logged in yesterday, you will know there are digital resources. You don't even have to leave your computer to use. So, I know I've used yeah. some like Reference USA, which now has a new name. Yes, Reference <laughs> Solutions. <laughs> but I'm really training myself to call it that. <laughs> I know. So I think it's a great idea, though, that somebody wants to learn about grant writing again, mm -hmm. because if you're doing it, you want to submit a good grant. And I mean, it, again, I always see it and hate it when somebody hasn't completed something correctly or didn't turn in what was there. And the biggest thing you can do is read read, read, <laughs> and then answer each question that they, they ask for. But again, look online, check out some books at the library or look at some of those mm -hmm. online resources and you can learn how to write grants. Yes, As I, I have written grants, I have reviewed grants. Um, everything Tracy just said, uh, agree a, a thousand percent. <laughs> you, you have to, before you submit, hit that submit button, go back and reread one more time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, in terms of business and trends, what are some areas or ideas to grow a business such as healthcare, IT, beauty, food, restaurant industry, et cetera? So I think this question maybe is uh, where, where are some big growth um, opportunities for small businesses right now? Uh, well, there's so many different ones, too, and timing is everything, I think, as a lot of people learn through uh, COVID as well. I mean, tech is always there. We see a lot of people, we get a lot of clients coming in in that area. Uh, restaurants have had a horrible time through through COVID. Um, restaurants historically run on very low profit margins, 
So that may not be something you jump into, but uh, uh, food trucks, they're doing fantastic. And some mm -hmm. people are doing very, very well in um, a farmer's market. So, I mean, there are ways in many different ways that you can think of a business and maybe change it a little. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is what I was saying earlier when we talked about funding our growth. We had someone who wanted a restaurant and they didn't have the money and they couldn't afford mm -hmm. all the equipment. And we talked about a food truck. Well, this person actually went to a push cart and did so well. So mm -hmm. again, you can be creative with this, not to get off on that, <laughs> on that, but it reminded me of so many ways you can you can start a business on less than what you thought you really needed to do that. So mm -hmm. uh, again, tech is always a good one. Food, food, we're always going to need to eat. So whatever way you want to do that, but restaurants are really high risk. And then we see a lot of, a lot more, especially women in service type industries uh, as well. Um, maybe selling something from home. Um, some have gotten into some and have done really, really well doing retail online. A uh, great way to do some things is maybe if you don't have a lot of money, find a company where you can do drop shipping. Uh, I have done drop shipping myself. So if you have a website or a lot of people are on Facebook now and you Shopify or some of those, when somebody orders, that company you they pay you and then you pay the company where you get your products from so that way you aren't out that money up front so that's another way people are starting and it's a good way to start a business that's not capital intensive but what you want to do is order from those people beforehand um, maybe have a family member or somebody else order because it is your name that is on there. And if they are a bad drop shipper and they don't ship for several days, um, I've sold on Amazon, eBay, I've had a website uh, and have drop shipped. And there are some companies that aren't good and you're the one responsible and you're the one who's gonna get a bad rating. Mm -hmm. So if you decide mm -hmm. that, make sure you check out the company first and make sure you get things timely sent. So I'm, I'm hearing that no matter what you decide, which, which uh, field or industry you're looking at, make it your own, adapt it to the resources you have available, and uh, really check out your vendors. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly right, because I've had that happen before where somebody wasn't great. And then also check too, because sometimes some of these companies, um, that you buy from will also compete with you. So you wanna make sure they aren't doing that. Um, I had somebody on Amazon and wanted me to sell his products, but you can't sell it on Amazon. And I sent, a, I sent an email, that's not really a good business model. And six months later, he was trying to get all the people he sells to to get back on Amazon. But at that point, people had just gone away. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any specific things they should know that would immediately deny a grant application? <sighs> not following the rules, not uploading what needs to go there, not signing and dating it. Um, some seem like really common things, but again, you have to pay attention to every detail on there. We have to have things that prove you are woman owned. And we list specifically what documents can be sent to show that the business is woman owned. Uh, and we've had people send a credit card and a driver's license. Well, that is nowhere on our list. Uh, it does not, a driver's license doesn't show you owe the business and if anybody got into our system or anything, we really don't want your driver's license and uh, credit card, you know? So 
make sure <laughs> so make sure you read everything on there because if you don't follow those gu guidelines uh and make sure you submit it by the time we had people submit two days later mm -hmm. uh That's so true. i mean so you want to make do anything you can to get it in front of the reviewer's eyes right because automatic disqualifications are going to to prevent that well, yeah, and we don't want to see that. We don't want to. It's frustrating for us, too. It's like, you know, what a great business, but they didn't follow through or answer everything that was requested. Yeah. Um, when going into a business as a business partner that the owner has already established clients, what's one specific thing you suggest to ask the owner before I'm having to scroll before becoming a partner. So what do you need to do before you become a business partner? What's your due diligence? Oh, well, probably one of the first thing, um, and I hear this from, I also give this advice to people who are looking at a franchise. Don't go by what the owner tells you. Find some of the customers and see what they have to say about the business. Mm -hmm. Check them out online, check out the reviews, uh, when you do go in though, ask for three years of financial statements and look through those. Does everything look accurate in there? Are the things that they're telling you matching the numbers? Uh, if you don't understand the numbers, have somebody that um, understands them, looks at them. It's worth the investment before you get involved. And if you do sign, decide to go into business with this person, make sure you have it in writing. Um, I've even had clients, a mother, daughter, I said, you guys really need uh, an agreement. No, this is my child. Well, turns out daughter started skimming credit cards uh, from the business. So I don't care who you go into business <laughs> with make sure you have some kind of written partnership agreement. Also, uh, if they're married, you want this as well because Texas is a community property state and maybe I'm going in business with you. Maybe your husband has no business sense or, or you know, or, or something. So you just really want to make sure, make sure you, again, do your due diligence before and really look over the numbers and everything that are there. If other people give you advice, make sure you listen. Um, I owned a Sears store and after I had sold it, um, somebody else, my banker said, there's some, this was many years down the road, someone was interested in looking at the business. Uh, would I talk to them? I said, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, they didn't do it. And after they bought the business, they were like, I wish I'd talk with you before. Because sometimes people think a business can support one, two, three, four families when mm -hmm. it can't. So again, do your due diligence before and after. Mm -hmm. Um, so here's another question about uh, Texas and community property. Um, if a woman owned business is based in Texas and she's married, how can it be a woman, woman owned business due to community property? 51% shows you are woman owned. If you, and I've had people ask, does that 1% really matter? Well, that 1% makes it a woman owned business but she needs to be the primary person involved in a business because there were time, times when uh, people would just put the woman as a front <laughs> to say the business was woman owned. Uh, so there, just make sure the woman is the one in control. The woman usually needs to have the higher salary as well. The SBA web, website, has a good description uh, on there as well, because they're the ones that they, they're one entity that does um, certifications for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think there are seven community property states, I think it's like most of the West. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people are, are, in this, uh, are in this with you and you're certainly not alone. It's a tremendous amount of the population. Um, you were talking about uh, developing a relationship with your banker. 
Um, but I was wondering about, you know, finding other investors outside of your, your, you know, your own kind of little banking world. So are there, are there networks of investors that you can tap into? Um, how, how do you find those angel investors and things like that? Okay. So for the angel investors, there is a directory online. I'll have to look be, because they are certified. Um, I'll, I'll email it to you, but you can find that there's a list and they've been, been approved. So they're angel investors. I mean, uh, make sure, and make sure you do your due diligence. Even if you're searching out those, make sure it's legit. They are set up correctly, et cetera. And you can also find venture capital firms that were mentioned in there again, but sometimes they want million dollar businesses or ideas or things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But there, there are many different ones out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's all, the, all of the questions I have. Unless another one comes in, what's a what is a a parting uh, bit of information you would like everyone to know as we wrap up Business <laughs> Equity Week? <laughs> that's just a little question. <laughs> well, really, no, you're. Really know your numbers before you're going in and just make mm -hmm. sure if you're starting the business that you're comfortable with it. Uh, another income stream is helpful while you're doing that as well. Mm -hmm. um, check and make see if your business is cyclical because many people don't realize that either. Mm -hmm. uh, some Sometimes retail some retail make all their money in the uh, fourth quarter so you know you're going to need to understand that about your business but as you're going for funding of any type have that strong plan together have strong numbers make sure you know that information by heart and another option for funding too is pitch contests so if you can put that together you can just google pitch contests they're all over the place some offer some maybe a thousand dollars, but I've seen some for twenty five thousand, some for fifty thousand. So that's an option as well, and use as many resources as possible uh, that you can to get the funding you need for your business. What about you, Donna Lisa? Um, I would say going back to when we were talking about the grants. Um, I know uh, we talked about um, getting the grant in prior to the deadline. I would say the biggest thing about that is um, know what the deadline is, but take time in putting it together because um, I'm not kidding you. We've launched a grant and we have submissions that night. And those are the ones that are typically missing the things um, that are required for the grant. So that's your opportunity to put your best business foot forward. And so again, knowing your numbers and all of those things and submitting that information in a very um, short and concise way with all of the required documents. And that'll definitely help you, um, you know, float, uh, go more towards the top versus the last ones. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. All right. Well, it looks like we're, we're out of questions. And I think I, okay, I, I lost my signal for just a second. So anyway, uh, I think we're, it looks like we're out of questions. We've answered them all. So thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you so much, Donna Lisa. This has been a real, real pleasure. I'm so glad we finally got this worked out and, uh, you know, got the pandemic and the ice storm out of the way finally. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. This has been a fantastic week. Um, uh, again, these videos are going to be on the library's YouTube site very shortly, and I'll be sending out an email to everyone who registered with just a world of information. So that's what librarians do. So I will connect you with as many resources as I possibly can and, uh, and a survey. So please, um, you know, we're asking for feedback, but we also want to know what you want to learn. So tell us and we will do our best to provide. So thank you everyone who's uh, attended with us one or five days this week. I really appreciate it and uh, hope to see you uh, at future programs. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having Thanks. us. We've enjoyed it. Thank you.